Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. And some translations, they like to add into verse 1, and it says, And you he made alive who were dead. Uh, this is an understood concept that's in that verse, and they've just added it in to clarify what the intent of the verse is. Uh, in verse 5, it'll tell us that uh, God made us alive together with Christ. So it's not a mistake, it's just uh, clarifying what's being said here. Because the term dead doesn't mean we're physically dead. I mean, uh, a dead person can't do good or evil. So we're really not physically dead. But living in sin leads to eternal death. So in that sense, a person who follows the course of this world is already dead. They just haven't quite got to that point yet. The Bible has uh, many uh, analogies about those living outside of Christ. It uh, talks about people who are blind. Uh, Satan has blinded our minds. Uh, we're a slave to sin. Uh, what a terrible position to be in is that I just can't stop doing this. We just become a slave to sin. Uh, we're a lover of darkness. Uh, a lot of people that are a slave to sin are really trying to get out of it. They're saying, God, help me, save me, deliver me. But a person that's a lover of darkness, they don't want to be delivered. They don't want to be saved. Uh, some people say they're sick. Uh, Jesus said uh, he came not to heal those who are well, but those who are sick. So when you're without God, you can be just sick sick is uh, one of the terms used, and lost. Uh, the prodigal son's a good example. Uh, once he was lost, but now he's found. But in the same uh, verse it says, once he was dead, and now he's alive. So to be lost is to be dead. And it, sometimes uh, lost are referred to as an alien, or a stranger, or a foreigner, because they are a stranger to the things of God. They're a stranger to they're an alien in the house of God. Uh, they don't fit uh, because they're not born again. And as we just read in verse 3, uh, that uh, children of wrath, we're a child of wrath without God. And we're under the power of darkness. People think, oh, I'm free from all that religious stuff. I'm free from all that stuff that God wants me to do. I don't have to be obedient to God. Well, you're under the power of darkness. Everybody has to serve somebody. So in this letter, Paul's using the extreme measure. He's saying uh, that those who live in sin are dead in their trespasses and sin. So what does uh, Paul mean by saying we're dead in our trespasses? That sort of speaks as a man as a rebel. He's going to go across that border, that border that says, this is my property, and when you go across this line, you're on my property. You're a trespasser. You're trespassing. And uh, the trespasser has gone over the border set by God. God says, if you go over this border, you're lost. You're a child of wrath. You're a, rebe a rebel against God. Don't go over this border. But the trespasser goes over the boundaries set by God. And sin speaks of our failure. Uh, we've missed the mark of God. Uh, those of you who may not heard, it's an old English term used for uh, when they were uh, practicing uh, archery. And if you missed the bullseye, you were a sinner. You missed the mark. And we've all missed the mark. There's none perfect, no, not one. So Paul is clarifying the fact that all mankind has walked in trespasses and sin. We've all followed the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air. The scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. And the sad part is, is that Satan, he is still working in the sons of disobedience. Question is, are believers sons of 
disobedient. Well, we just read verse 2. It says, in which you once walked. Well, that means we're no longer walking as sons of disobedience. We once walked that way, but not any longer. We have now got the power to resist sin. The Bible tells us if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. We couldn't do that without Jesus Christ. We have the opportunity to repent of our sins. We can confess our sins and turn away from them. This is the power that God has given us. Sin no longer rules in our lives. We have at one time walked in the passions of our flesh. We've allowed the desires of the body and the mind to control us because we were children of wrath, just like the rest of mankind. But now we have become one with Christ. Satan can't work in the sons of God. Now he can tempt us. He can tempt the sons of God. He can try to lead you astray. But he can't be in you. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 7 it says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasur immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So while we were children of wrath, God had mercy on us and he pardoned our transgressions. Famous verse in Isaiah 53, verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. How great a love God has for his people, the people that he created. He created us for himself. You know, we can't make ourselves lovable to God. Uh, we've done nothing for God to desire us. We are his creation, and that's why he desires us. We are the recipients of his great love. It's by God's grace that we've been saved. God loved us before we were created. God's in love. God is in love with what we shall be. God has made us come to life in Jesus. To come to life means that we had to have been dead. You don't come to life if you're already alive. So we were dead in our sins. We may have life in this world, but we were destined for eternal destruction, eternal damnation. Jesus has shared in our death so we could share in his resurrection life. How exciting is that? We are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. This earth is not our home any longer. Our home is in heaven. Our home is seated with Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. We're just strangers passing through this land. So what has God got in store for those who believe? The immeasurable riches of his grace. This is to be shown to us in the coming ages. In the coming ages. In our resurrected eternal life. For ages and ages and ages we will see the immeasurable riches of his grace. God's grace is eternal. It's bottomless. I mean, I know there's a day coming and we shall see him face to face. But that's not the end. That's the beginning of more and more of God's grace being shed upon us for all the ages to come. God's grace and kindness is given to everyone who are in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It's God who's given us this gift of grace. If I'm blinded by the God of this world, I can't make myself have sight because I'm blind. If I'm dead in my sins and trespasses, I can't resurrect myself because I'm dead. 
If I'm lost, I can't find myself. I have to be found. And it's God's grace, it's his gift to us that saves us. And what does it mean that we're saved through faith? Romans 10, 17, it tells us, So faith comes by hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. So those who have heard the good news of salvation and believed it can receive the gift of grace. John 5, 24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. That's how we're saved through faith. We've heard the word and believed it and received it and accepted God's grace. But we can't boast. I said, oh God, I accepted your grace. Oh, how wonderful am I? You know? And we can't boast about what we're doing. Oh God, did you see that? I just prayed for that person. They got saved. Good thing that you created me. Wow. No, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23, Jesus said, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. What is the law that they're breaking? Well, they're proud of what they're done. Now, we are his workmanship. We are his creation. It's God who is changing me. You know, there's some teachers out there they they tell you maybe they're well-meaning but they tell you if you'll just get rid of this Jesus can come in and take that place if you'll just stop doing that Jesus can come in and take that place well I got good news for you if you're like me I just can't stop doing anything but Jesus came into me and Jesus comes into you and he comes into us and gives us the desire to put away those things that don't glorify him it's because of Jesus Christ, those things are swept out. I just look at the Holy Spirit coming in and going, oh, wow, what a mess we got in here. Let's start cleaning. Whoop, whoop. He starts sweeping everything out because I can't get rid of it, but God can. And the way he does it is build our desire for him, build our love for him. And all of a sudden, the things that were so important to me or the things that I wanted to do that were not of God, I just don't want to do them anymore. It says in the Bible that the laws of God will be written in your hearts. How exciting is that? What's the difference? I don't go down there and say, oh, the Bible says I can't steal. I better not steal. No, I just go, wow, I don't want to steal. I want to be pleasing to God. He wrote it in my heart. God is not improving my old nature. I guarantee you that. He's not improving your old nature. He's not in the remodeling business, but he's made us a new creation. We were nothing, and God made us into a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. The good works don't save us, but God has prepared a way for us to do his works. God prepared these works for us to walk in before he even created the world. He had it all planned out. He said, oh, I'm going to have Rick do this and Rick do that, and I'm going to have you do this and you do that. He's prepared a way for us to do what he would have us do to glorify his name. Uh, he actually prepared these works before he created the world. It was all planned out what we were going to do. Uh, we don't do works to exalt ourselves, but we have the privilege of being used of God to build the kingdom of God. I just wonder today, are you walking and talking with Jesus, seeking his face? saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? And working in his field to glorify the name of God.